Th- I have that's not a nice seen break the film right we're there too. talking about today. I know it's shocking. So you would say well, we're doing we're, the, about, we're we're doing the usual, yeah. which being underprepared. Though in my yeah. defense, is this this because in my defense, this is still one of the ones you'd have to stream. Yes, you correct. can't stream it anymore. Well, not anymore. But like when it came out, it was streamed, and I'm never going to pay that kind of money to stream a movie. That well, it's well, no, streamed on uh, HBO Max. If you already had it, it didn't cost anything. Oh, so by the way, it, if it cost me. Didn't ha- Oh, it cost me it. two months of uh, HBO Max because I forgot to cancel it. Hey, welcome back to Even More Mashed Up. We are the singular pop culture podcast starring two professors talking about all things pop culture. My name's Alan. And I'm Patrick. And you know what, Alan? I feel really bad. But why is that? Well, it's been so long since we've done an episode of the show. Uh, it's almost like we left our fans to wonder, whoa, man, when are they going to talk about that big superhero movie that came out a month ago? Oh, I see what you did there. Because we're talking today, see? Wonder Woman, 1984. Yeah, I couldn't find a way to get 1984 into the opening, so I just went yeah, no, Wonder the, the... Whoa, man. Yeah, no, it's it's good, but um, yeah, the numbers you need to get the nineteen eighty four in there. Yeah, wait, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa! Did you just ask for numbers? I feel like I you just asked me for numbers. And I'm sure you've got something you to deliver today, right? I do not have numbers today. Only exposing your hypocrisy. The man who loves numbers never brings them. Oh, that, but that's no, because you have because to pay have, now, right? Because yeah, because you know what I have? Fun facts. Oh, I thought you were going to say letters. Things no, that no, aren't no. fun, nor are I've they got, facts. I've got, I've got fun facts. No, no, they're definitely well, factual. Well, the first time the first time we have fun with them will be the first time we've had fun with them. Well, there may be fun for me. And, and the viewers. I, I'm pretty sure the viewers love fun facts. Didn't we do a poll where people said we need more fun facts? Yeah, among the Back viewers. They were all the, something else. Yeah, yeah, among all the viewers oh, sorry, who listeners. watch the podcast. Yeah, that, yeah well put. Yeah. 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 Whoa. Was that Leia? There's a there's a ferocious beast in the studio apparently. Yeah, I don't know where he went, but yeah, you got got pretty fired Jeez. up there all of a sudden. Yeah, he he probably he probably heard about the fun facts and was very excited. Or angry about the fun I, facts. He sounds angrier to me, frankly, but Well, he's probably he's probably angry at you trashing the fun facts. It's probably what no. it is. No, Nobody's angry so. for trashing fun facts. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Rich. Oh, Rich Thank is here you. too. Rich is here I too. I am. I zoned out. You were talking about yeah. fun oh, facts. Always nice to have Rich here. I know Rich is deeply All prepared right. for Wonder Woman 1984. I imagine it was uh, disappointing. So, Patrick, you may remember that we actually yes. talked about Wonder Woman 84 back yes. when we did our podcast on the fandom. Oh, that's correct. We did, yes. We did. We talked about it briefly. And I I went back and I grabbed my notes in part because my uh, word word crashed on my computer. So I couldn't take any notes until the last minute today. How did word crack? It crashed. You said cracked. No, I said crashed. You heard cracked. You said cracked. No, No, I said said crashed, but you heard cracked. Mm -hmm. Well, the good news is when we go back and listen to this, one of us will be right and one of us will be wrong. Okay. So, uh, the notes were pretty thin, actually. As, as I looked back, I yeah. was disappointed that Steve Trevor was in the film again. As expected. I mm-hmm. wondered if Cheetah would create a flashback to the movie Cats. Okay. I acknowledged that I liked the parachute pants joke. Okay. And then the final note I said was, the first one was good. It was so good, it seems like this would be something to see. Okay. Would, would you say that I was right? Um, I would say it, it was worth seeing once. Because um, that's Ooh. all I've seen it. Ooh, that's that's um, a damning indictment for any superhero movie. That's yeah, that's I mean that's my point. I think I saw the original yeah. Wonder Woman like at least three times in the theaters. Yeah, and um, then you bought. You, I'm sure you bought bought the Blu-ray too. 
Yes, yes. So will you not buy the Blu-ray of this? Uh, I may get it like when it's like seven ninety nine at uh, Thanksgiving. Any Lego sets that have you bought of either? Oh yeah, I bought the Lego set. Yeah, I bought the Lego set, but that came out like a while before the movie came out. So, but it's, so is that Do Lego you... set though for both films or for the first one? No, it's specific. No, there's a separate one for the first film. There's one that's specifically for this film. Oh, you Do you wish? Both. Do you wish that you could return it, Patrick? No, no, it was or a fun set to build. Of it? <laughs> Maybe the no, Steve no, no. Trevor part. Perfectly... I mean, the Lego, I, you know, the Lego set. The, the quality of the movie does not necessarily affect the Lego set. So, so uh, you would. It was actually a would, fun set to build. Would you say you'd like to build a Michael Bay Transformers three Lego set then? No, no, <laughs> no, no. And no, then no. blow it up. Like I, this, this should be a future podcast. What pop culture? Mm-hmm moments are so mm-hmm. anathema to Patrick that he would not buy anathema? the Lego set. What did I say? You said like anathema. It's anathema. I, did you just say an enema? Because that's a totally different thing. No. Did not say an enema. It felt like you did. So I we'll have to go back and listen to that uh-huh. one too. Yeah, let's, so let's anyway, do that. Yeah. So anyway, um, anyway, where do you want to start with this thing? Oh, we can start with some fun facts. Mm. Mm. Well, all right. I, Would why you like start, to know? So, let's not lead with the fun. Let's end with the fun. So, yeah, start with the fun facts. All right. So, so uh, according to THR, and this is based on the Nielsen report. Okay. Viewers spent 2.25 billion minutes watching Wonder Woman 1984 in its first week which is roughly 15 million full plays of the film, making it the number one streaming film for December 21st through the 27th. Okay, that yeah. is... Does that mean anything? Wait, no, it, number one, it means nothing, and number two, it's numbers disguised as fun facts. Yeah, that's what you always say about the fun facts. I do? Yeah, because they're always well, numbers disguised as fun facts. It's been a it while. Turns I don't out, know why you're. It's it, you're a little. It you, turns, clearly, it's been a while since we've done the show. You've forgotten the whole point of fun facts, which is that they're numbers did, in disguise. I got to be honest. I never realized they were numbers in disguise. You realize that every time I start talking about fun facts, you complain that they are numbers in disguise. I just assumed that was a co- every time. I just I just assumed that was a coincidence on your part. No. No. All right, so so globally, the movie has brought in one hundred and fifty million dollars versus a two hundred million dollar budget. So it's actually losing money in terms of budget. That sounds bad. Yeah. However, it yes. did allow HBO Max to reach its goal for subscribers two years early. Well, that must make uh, the makers of Wonder Woman feel very good about. But things, are they going to hold know? on to those subscribers, or are they going to like in a month? Are That's a good question. Gonna... I imagine, hey, like most people, got the one Rich month, get, whether it was free or not. Well, Rich, I mean, they got two mm-hmm. months out of me, but let's be honest, your points again. Yeah. Well, but yeah. they also, I think they excluded, I think they ended all of their free trials the day before Wonder Woman came out. So they had I, to, so you couldn't get like a free month. Right, but again, I feel like... You had to pay for it. Like, Alan, you're going to, okay, forget or commit to getting that one month, and then once that month is over, that's it. You're done. You know, I think the vast majority of people forget. But they'll remember well, that, eventually. Like, you know, that's not a... Uh, banking on people just forgetting they've bought your service is not particularly great yeah. yes. metric. Not <laughs> not really the best way to maintain service, yeah. probably. Yeah. Well, Nobody's you would watching think our stuff, thing. but they just keep paying us money. Yeah. Rich, could, the important could you... thing yeah. is that as, as a result of these... As, as a consequence of these results, Warner Brothers has fast-tracked production on Wonder Woman 3. Oh, good. Is that is that good news? You know what this this what this movie did because clearly Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four shows that there's no problem with trying to get a movie done very quickly. Absolutely no Oof. issue with rushing things in general. You know that movie so, could not have used like another editorial pass or two. Well, it needed more than an editorial pass or two, but that would have been a start. Yeah. Yeah. So. Rich, if you could just try to like get a hold of Warner Brothers and see if they could just start sending me the movies for free since we're going to give them all this publicity. Uh, that's a good point. 
I think there's oh, a term. What we need to do is we need we'll, see we need because I uh, I follow oh, sponsorship. Uh, you know, the 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 comic book writer Kurt Busiek on on Twitter, and he's like a member of of SAG or or the Writers Guild or something, and so he's always getting the award screeners of yes, various I, films. Yes, that's what that's I want. What I want screeners. On. I want screeners. Yeah, we, we need to get the we need to get on whatever that awards uh, gravy train is. Because well, then once they will one send of you gets into the, the writers movies. guild, then we're good to go. Well, but well we must be, we've written. I, there again, must be I'm a, not to... right. There must be a PAG like a podcaster guild too. Hmm. <laughs> I like how you. Give I think up it's on... called yeah, yeah, the uh, the podcasters guild of America, the PGA. Yeah. I think they go on tour. Yeah. I like though how you've given up on the idea that you've both written books. Like, forget that. We did a podcast. Hashtag golf joke. <laughs> Hashtag golf joke. Yeah. So now yeah. Patrick is skewing our demographic yet older. Mm-hmm. Let's see. We've done well, the we golf are, you jokes. You and I are aging, so yeah. Maybe like I've we could do dad, a. Rev- I've done. I've Wait, done dad it? humor with oh. my Wonder Woman. If you could just, Patrick, get like a commercial spot where you're selling a reverse mortgage, I think we'd be golden. Okay. What's a reverse mortgage? Well, that's is how that you take advantage. Lizard? No, it's how you take advantage of old folks by kind of buying them out oh, of their is that like the is that the whole Is that the whole GameStop thing? Is that a reverse oh, mortgage? For, oh, for God's sake. All right. Let's <laughs> move on. <laughs> Man, there's a whole podcast. There's a GameStop thing. Yeah. Uh. No. Right. Oh, yeah, we should do a deep dive into economics. That seems like our wheelhouse. Hey, I bought some stocks in AMC. Good for you. Did you buy them when they were low, or did you buy them when they were high? Uh, low-ish. And did you use okay. your own money, or did you use my money to eat my popcorn? I, 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 I don't see a difference. Yeah, so he had to borrow well, money to invest into AMC. So the next time, the next time that I go to see a movie... I assume Rich is going to get me in for free now that he owns the theater. In the in the distance, do we have an AMC <laughs> around here? Since yeah, I like <laughs> not that I have a bunch We're, of money, but I just own the theater. We don't yeah. have an AMC nearby, do we? Oh, we'll just drive uh, to the Rich city. owns it. Rich yeah, we'll will just take drive me to the city. Rich we'll get will a limo. drive me to the city. We'll drive down to New York. Yeah, that's right. Mm. And when we walk okay. in, Rich won't even have to say anything. People will see him, and they will just. Part. And then we will go and we will watch a movie. And we'll each have our own thing of popcorn. That's right. Cool. Wow. Living the dream. You got to lower your expectations nowadays. Yeah. All right. So should we get back to talking about the theme of lowered <laughs> expectations? Should we get back yes. to talking about Wonder Woman 1984? Yes. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, so, I thought the movie was like perfectly fine. It was entertaining. Um... As long as you don't really think about it too much, because when you think about a, it, it starts to fall apart really quickly. Which is a great thing for a film. Hey, don't think well, about this too much. And this here's, is, here's, my hot, here's my hot take on Wonder Woman 1984, Alan. Oh, boy. All right. I'm having a hard time deciding if it is better or worse than Aquaman, and I'm leading towards worse. Wow. I mean, do you have so Aquaman saying, as low as I do? Um, so. pretty close. Yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, it, I don't know. Better it's been than a while Suicide I've Squad. Aquaman. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, I, 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 I didn't really think about Suicide Squad. I mean, Wonder Woman's definitely above that, but not by as right. much as it should be. No, I agree. I, at least Aquaman, you like could laugh it's, at. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing, and I think Aquaman at least slightly holds together better. Than Wonder Woman, like there's just stuff in Wonder Woman 1984 that just makes no sense. I I hear, I hear what you're saying, but to me, at least Aquaman. I don't think they meant for me to laugh at it the way I did, but I could laugh at it and thus enjoy it. Yeah, and I yeah. I, I yeah. couldn't laugh at this one. No, well, Aquaman I think is is the modern day equivalent of like the the 1980s Flash Gordon movie. Yeah. Well, do you do you like, feel Aquaman. like do you feel like Part of the reason you feel this way about Wonder Woman is because the first one set such a bar that in falling short, it feels especially disappointing. That if there, yeah, in, in other I words, mean, if this I, were the I, first I, Wonder Woman movie, 
you wouldn't feel yeah. as badly about it as you do now. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd tweak that a little bit, but basically saying, you know, I mean, one of the problems with Wonder Woman 1984 is that it falls prey to the trap that so many other sequels fall prey to, which is that it just tries to do way too much, and it's just, it's 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 kind of a mess of a movie because of that. And I would have hoped, based on the first Wonder Woman, that the second film would have avoided that trap, but it didn't. It, 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 I've it, seen... You know. And so, yeah, yeah. so it, it, it falls into... It does what almost every other, you know, movie sequel does um, in sort of the action-adventure genre, and so it falls into a lot of the same problems. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen any number of people kind of writing about how this is such a sequel-y kind of movie in that way. But to me, it was it, yeah. the sequel. The sequel falls prey to a, a different problem. It, it mm. feels to me like Wonder Woman eighty four is very much trapped by the first Wonder Woman film. That like it created the Wonder Woman trope. It created all the beats you're supposed to have in a Wonder Woman movie. Oh yeah, and yeah. so and so it like to me it was very much Guardians of the Galaxy too, which oh, okay. I found. Yeah. I found very I enjoyable, you about that. but I found like you felt it was the same thing all over again, basically. Yeah. It, well, so, Hey, somebody's out of sync with the times again. I mean, it's not wonder Woo! woman. It's Steve Trevor, but still, you know, yeah. and here's paradise Island again. And let's watch wonder woman yeah. walk through man's destruction of man again. It's just like, it See, felt I was, to me yeah, I was as hoping, if, yeah, I was hoping yeah. for more from the Steve Trevor, uh, being the man out of the world this time. I, I kind of hoping that I liked that when I saw it in the trailer, but it just kind of fell flat for me in the film. Well, to me, it was one of those ex examples where the trailer did all the work and there was nothing left. Like they, like they, they yes, scooped I out. Agree. I think that's the, fair. They, they scooped out the good parts of Steve Trevor out of time. And then the rest of it was, we'll talk about this later, like cringy at times, actually, I thought. Uh, cringy might be a bit of an understatement. But, yeah, yeah, thank you. Well, I, I, I think along I, the same lines, like the opening half hour with the Amazons felt like the, okay, we've checked the box of having the Amazons here. Yep. Um, oh, yeah. yeah but I had, mean, that was... had so little, it had so little to do with the actual film. Even like, you know, it set up the whole idea of, you know, young Wonder Woman, young Diana sort of learning the lesson of, you know, you can't win if you, if you, you know, try to cheat or you take a shortcut. But that's the exact same lesson that she learns in 1984. Um, right. And so it's not like – like the point of having that in the beginning would be to show how she's learned that lesson. Right. Having her relearn the same lesson that she was supposed to learn in that opening makes the opening completely superfluous. And then the only other thing it did was set up um, – oh, I forget her name, the, the Linda Carter cameo. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't oh, remember. I had it written down in my notes. I can't find it. Uh, oh, Asteria. Like it just yeah. set up her in her golden armor, which you know you could have done that in much less time. So yeah, I mean, Vicky liked the the spectacle of it, and I could kind of see that mm -hmm. as like a, uh, you know, American Ninja Warrior on Paradise Island or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Like the truth of the matter is, it was too long, and it yeah. didn't really serve any purpose except to show that I guess she didn't learn the lesson. Yeah. Well, the other thing too is, and I found speaking of what we were talking about earlier. So as as I was putting together notes for this show, I found at least one article that I guess mentioned referenced Patty Jenkins saying that they didn't leave. There's no director's cut of this film because they didn't actually cut anything that they filmed. And I think yeah. that speaks to to the issues with the film. I'm like, yeah, this film needed be to be cut because we had like a half hour intro with the Amazons and then we had, you know, the big mall fight sequence. Like the first 45 minutes of it is, yeah. is all just kind of, of unnecessary introductory stuff. And it's a two and a half hour movie that felt like a two and a half hour movie. No, it, it definitely felt like a two and a half, half hour movie. And just to go back to my point about repeating wonder woman one, it just shows mm -hmm. how little faith studios have in American audiences. Just, yeah. they have, like no faith in us whatsoever to want anything except exactly what we've always been given. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's that nostalgia that, that, you know, they feel pays. It does make me, I does read Wonder Woman 1984 and Aquaman does raise another question in my mind, which is, which is, which is that has the DC filmic universe found its niche, which is big dumb spectacles 
that aren't really that good. I mean, yeah, I feel like, like that could be any film in the DC universe. Yeah, it's like the no, Michael not, Bay... Not, not the Zack Snyder like, ones. Not the, it's like Michael Bay without the good. I hear exactly what you're saying, yeah. Like yeah, Michael I mean, Bay, I but... Mean, basically, yeah, but, Michael... Like, basically, we're going to do Michael Bay versions of the DC heroes. They're going to be big and dumb, and they're going to do really well their first week, and then they will be forgotten. But they're going to do no, well no. more because of the notoriety than really the, the film. Right, but no, what, what I'm trying to say is they're doing Michael Bay, but they're doing a joyless version of Michael Bay. It's like because I love Michael, Michael Bay. Bay. Can make a movie, and it's like he has no budget for mm-hmm. explosions. You know, it's like you've got to make a movie with no explosions, Michael Bay. Well, I mean, you could I do mean, that, but why would Michael you? Bay movies without explosions. Why would no, you no, handcuff I'm, I'm a saying... true artist in that way? Like, why would you take an no, I'm artist saying, that's and what say the DC movies are you like? Know, Da Vinci, you can do whatever you want, but you can't have paint well, or no, pencil. The, you know, like come that's on. what's different about Wonder Woman. That's what's different about Wonder Woman and Aquaman. Rich is they do have the big explosions. That's the Michael Bay ones. Oh, they have trust me. I mean, more Aquaman's underwater, so you can't have a lot of explosions. But they did have a giant yes, crab. Yes, you can. Arc, so. Michael Bay would find a way. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Would, but... if, if you're telling me a bunch of salt water is going to stop Michael Bay from detonating a That's whole true. series of de- of, I say you're crazy. That's true. That's true. Michael Bay would find a bay. Bay would find a way. Yeah, no, I see what you're both trying to do. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So. so, should we move on to other disappointing parts of the film then, and then we can end with the good stuff? Sure. That sounds like a good idea. All right. So, can I start with? Let's. We can just trade off complaints. Okay. I found the Dreamstone at the center of the movie very disappointing. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I 100% agree. I kept waiting for it to be something more. I kept waiting for it mm-hmm. to be something meaningful. And you know what yeah. it was at the end? It was literally just a stone that grants yeah. wishes like the monkey's yeah, very, ball. Yeah, well, it's the very definition of a MacGuffin. I mean, I remember watching the film. Okay, what really bugged me is when, you know, when the Dreamstone shows up, like Diana and and uh, Cheetah have this long conversation about like, oh, we need to find out which god created this. I'm like, okay, well, that's clearly going to be important. There's a um, hook. And, and, and then they just mention, I actually had to look it up on Wikipedia because I missed it during the film, is that it was apparently Dolos, the Greek god of deception. And I'm like, yeah, I don't even know who that, like, that's like, that was the payoff was... No, it like was some random minor Greek god. Like I was like, that's that's so just like, why do we even well, care about that? But the thing is, like, it didn't matter. It did even when you found that out. It just it didn't matter in any way. The well, only it good thing, in the sense, it mattered in the sense that because there was nothing else, it did make the Dreamstone the center of the film, which was just not a good idea. Like the Dreamstone no. was not. No, not absolutely it's, not. It's too much of a it's, like I said, it's too much of a MacGuffin. For the film to hang on, like, right, absolutely, like that. That's the whole film, really, is that phallic stone. Yeah. Like, that's it. And, oh, okay, yeah. so they, could, if, not, they were, could not have picked a more phallic-looking stone, by the way. So, would it be fair to say that Patty Jenkins maybe was trying to reference the Golden Age? The only good thing I can say about the Dreamstone is it feels like a '50s comic book, in that it has no depth whatsoever. That it's driven just by a MacGuffin. Yeah, well, I think part of it, too, is that I don't think Patty Jenkins is the only one that had a hand in this script, because I'm pretty sure Jeff Johns helped write the script. Interesting. Um, And he, I mean, speaking of kind of nostalgia and things like that, like Jeff Johns, you know, he's a great comic book writer, but I mean, he wrote the Green Lantern movie. So that's the kind of, yeah, or he's an executive producer or something like Jeff Johns should not be writing films. And I feel like. Um, I think part of the problem too is is that you know the first Wonder Woman film was not written by Patty Jenkins and Jeff Johns. It was written by other people, yeah. um, and she directed it. I, I you know I, I think she ran into the issue of I, I don't know that this film worked. Both having her yeah. write it and direct it. Interesting, interesting. All right, so um, the Dreamstone we both agree on disappointing. Well, and the other problem with the Dreamstone is just you know. It makes no well, – number one, it's not clearly explained. True. Um, and when they do explain it, they violate their own explanations because they say <laughs> you only get one wish on the Dreamstone, but right. Cheetah gets two. Um, and then the other – this is something I found really confusing was that the whole like 
you're going to wish for something, but we're going to take something away from you. Like yeah. that only came halfway through. So when, when Cheetah made her wish and was able to equal Wonder Woman and we started seeing that Wonder Woman was weakening, I thought I was like, oh, she wished to be just like Diana. So she's, they're going to be equal in power and that's why she's able to fight her. And then it's this thing later, which like, oh no, you get, you lose something. Like Cheetah was losing her humanity and, and Wonder Woman yeah. was losing her powers because of her wish. I'm just like, okay, that was not clearly yeah, explained. Was- no, it was... um, and then every other every other wish comes true immediately, but when Max Lord's son wishes for his father to come home, that doesn't happen till the end of the film. Um, no, it's, there's just so it's... much about it that that made no. That was just so inconsistent that that it just made the Dreamstone as the key to this movie is as just even more problematic for me. So yes, I 100 percent I... agree that that was not a good part of the film. All right, so we agree on that. Do you want to throw out another complaint then? Uh, should we talk about Cheetah? Sure, let's talk about Cheetah. So I really like Kristen Wiig in the role. Yes, I agree with that. She but was good. I feel, I, I feel like, particularly like, what really bothered me was there was nothing building up to like her actually turning into to a Cheetah. Um, like she yeah. makes the wish about being an apex predator and then we just see her in her, her normal, you know, human form for a while and then the next scene when wonder woman shows up she's like in full-on cat form i'm like there was no there was like no we didn't see her like partially transform into a cat or get claws it's like she's human and then all of a sudden she's a cat i'm like that made no sense whatsoever um yeah and also why did her wish actually make her a cat creature like that is a very literal interpretation of her you know i want to be an apex predator when and all of really, the other wishes w- yeah. were not really as literal as that. Because Wonder Woman That's didn't ask I, for Steve Trevor back in someone else's body. She asked for Steve Trevor back. Right. No, it, to me it was very strange. I don't understand why hers took that very particular route and nobody else's did, except for the fact that they needed Cheetah in the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, to be fair, Wonder Woman does not have a deep rogues gallery of villains. Well, I know Much that's like true. Aquaman. Yeah. She's got slightly more than Aquaman. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, I don't. Yeah. So I thought Kristen Wiig did about as well as you could, and actually it was pretty good at moments. In a part, yeah. it was a a pretty stereotyped part in both like the before yes. and the after versions of the character. I'm not sure that they yeah. gave her a ton to work with there. Well, and I think that going back to to something you mentioned earlier, and this will come up with other things too, is that I think one of the things she was trying one of because Jenkins has said that some of the stuff they did in the film was trying to, was based on kind of 1980s films. And so I think yeah. the way in which that you see her going from sort of the awkward, quote, ugly duckling character at the beginning to becoming sort of the uh, more confident, um, more assertive character that she later becomes was kind of playing on some of the ways you would see that portrayed in like 80s films like, um, I don't know, like 16 Candles or... or um, oh, okay. You know, that, that, the I, films that have kind of that, 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 that ugly duckling transformation sort of storyline. Right. I think that might work if the whole movie kind of functioned and it felt like an eighties film, which I don't think it necessarily does. Well, that's the thing. And it, 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 because it tried, there's other aspects that it tried to, but it didn't work. Right. But because it doesn't work in a, in a consistent way in the film, yeah. Cheetah has the, the unfortunate consequence of being reduced to like as a female character, you're mm-hmm. either kind of like smart but mousy and awkward and unpopular, mm-hmm. or you're you know um, sexy but oh, you're Wonder Woman, yeah. yeah, right. You know, like it's it's like it's like one or the other, and it just yeah. I don't know. I I just feel like in that way, as good as the first film was often in terms of its politics Mm -hmm. here, it just seems to kind of stumble. Well, and again, I mean, you could, you could see both. Well, and that's the problem with both Cheetah and Wonder Woman is that in a lot of ways, they're both in the film motivated by men that, that, you know, Cheetah wants to be, wants more attention from men, wants to be more attractive to men. And Wonder Woman obviously is, is still completely, you know, pining over Steve Trevor. Uh, yeah, 
well, and can I go further on on Diana while we're talking about her? Like sure. the the idea that she is pretty much willing to choose what she knows is kind of a faked version of Steve over oh I don't know the destruction literally of the entire planet is mm-hmm. pretty disappointing. Like that she needs to have her pseudo boyfriend talk her mm-hmm. out of it as the nukes are in the air and literally all human existence is going to end. And yet she Mm -hmm. still clings to Steve Trevor. It, it, in this way, it also felt like a golden age comic, right? It felt Mm -hmm. like, it felt like going back to the, the really bad old days of wonder woman, where it was all about trying to get Steve's attention. Yes. I mean, like, stop and think about it for mm -hmm. a minute. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, Patrick, go ahead. Oh no! I didn't say that. You cut. You cut out on my end. I didn't. You said stop and think about, and then I lost you. So oh, what were you saying? Yeah, like as Rich was saying, stop and think. Like she's the hero, and she's willing to trade away all of human existence, including, I guess, her own, yeah. for another ten minutes we're with Steve Trevor. We're supposed to aspire to this point, as you yeah, know, the mortal. Right? It just, it just, <laughs> uh, you know, and that yeah. this is the, well, this I, is I think the that, well, problem. I think, that, with... I think that gets to some of the problem too. Is that she's not nearly as inspiring a character in this film as she was in the first. And that's the problem with Steve Trevor. They got away with it in the first film and it kind of worked because of the way Steve went mm-hmm. out. But like when you keep bringing Steve Trevor back, it's like there's this gravitational yeah. suck that just sets in around mm-hmm. that character. Yeah. Oh, Again, I think another weakness of the film is that, okay, we have to have Chris Pine. I, it feels like they worked backwards. You know, we have to have Chris Pine yeah. in this film. So how do we bring Steve Trevor back? Well, yeah, I we'll think that's Wonder a great Woman way. Wish, we'll have Wonder Woman wish to bring him back. Okay, so then we need something that she can wish on. Okay, let's make this. Let's call it a dream stone. And let's um, shape it like a penis. Let's, right, let's go. Let's go dig not? through. Let's go dig through. Is there is there a Greek or Roman god of like lies or yeah. deception? We can't use Loki. That would be problematic. Um, yeah. But can we use? You know, is there? Okay, we found Dolos. Okay, let's use Dolos because. You know, that way we can say he created the Dreamstone and then we get to have Diana Wish and bring Steve back. All right, we've got our movie. Now, what's right. the actual it's like being in the White House room right now. Yeah, no, it's just, it. you know, it's just the, the movie would and have been bring so the much Amazons better. In, how do we bring the Amazons in? I know, right. we'll put them in the prologue to teach Diana a lesson that she fails to learn and so thus has to learn again. I know this seems like I'm just beating the same drum, but – had they just made this movie without Steve Trevor, they would have escaped oh. almost all of the problems that you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. I remember yeah. even or, talking about this or, beforehand. Or, and I was like, hey, yeah. you know. Well, well going back to your point about, you know, if they had trusted audiences more, that they didn't need the Amazons and Steve Trevor and all the things they liked in the first movie. Um, yep. You know, if they didn't need to see that, they could actually do something different with it. Um but yeah, they they they. I mean, they did what every kind of sequel does, which is play it very very safe. Right, so safe that it that it just doesn't function. It doesn't work. Yeah, bigger and yet safer too, which is which doesn't go together at all. Yeah, well, it doesn't. I I can see the the reasoning in America. Like Americans want bigger, brighter, louder, more explosive, and they'll be fine with it. Yeah, and right, apparently right, they no, were. I think that's. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. I mean that's why I wonder if that's D, if that's the DC film universe's niche is just giving the audiences the bigger, dumber films they want. Yeah, well they're going to kill the superhero. Yeah, they're they're going to kill peak superhero. But if we're yeah. talking well, about been how saying that for a while, yeah, that's true. I think it's it, dead already. I think we're just watching the death throes. I see what you're saying. Yep, it's just it, it's just the thrashing about at the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, in some ways. So if Diana was was disappointing, Steve Trevor was pretty problematic in his own ways too. I thought a uh, little bit. So when it just you you're the the comic book science guy, so I need some help yes. with <laughs> Dreamstone here. All right. When Diana wishes that Steve were still with her, mm-hmm. the way Steve comes back. Yeah. Is to take over, take over some other guy's body yeah. and life, right? And yeah. so he then finds Diana, 
and no. they they go back to his apartment and they're kind uh, of like to the just, well to the apartment of the guy that Steve took over. Right, exactly. And it's still so it is it Steve or is it the is Steve in the body of the guy he took over? But then I think my under the way I look at it is that we only see him as Chris Pine, but in actuality he looks like the dude he took over. Like if because he looks in the mirror at, or whatever, he will look no, like in the mirror. When he first when shows he up looks at the, the museum, mirror. he looks like to- he's a totally different guy physically. Um, so my yeah. sense is that, you know, they didn't want to have it be a guy doing a Chris Pine impersonation. So we see Chris Pine, but we're not seeing what everyone else in the world of the film see. Right. That, which is okay. just random dude who's an engineer, apparently. So that means when Diana and Steve have an intimate moment together, yes. that some guy whose body is being controlled by Steve yes. is kind of being told to have sexual relations. Yes. Well, and, and it raises the question because Steve is very much aware that he's in the other guy's body. When they go to the house, he's Absolutely. like, oh. Yeah. He says something about like, oh, the guys. And so that makes me wonder, like, OK, so if Steve is aware of the other guy, is yep. the other guy aware that Steve has taken over his body? Can I ask is you a question? In, is he in the body screaming? Oh, God. Oh, God. What's going on? Yeah. Can, can I ask you a question, Patrick? Does it matter whether the guy is conscious inside of Steve taking him over or whether he's just been wiped clean temporarily until Steve leaves? Like what, either what one does seem like a, it would be slightly really, more Yeah, but if he's aware of what they're doing to him, it seems to make it much more traumatic. True. Both are but, awful, but one is even more awful than the other. Right, but from the perspective of what Steve and Diana are doing, it's both awful. are both are profoundly immoral and and a, a fundamental violation of this guy's body. Yes. Now, do you want to hear Patty Jenkins' defense? Do I? I don't know. So she says – she defends this aspect aspect of the movie by saying that it was playing on the tradition of the 1980s body swap film like Big or Freaky Friday. Well, do you really Mm. want to pattern what you're doing on like – 80s norms of sexual behavior well yeah that well and also the fact that that she mentioned big which i always i mean i've always had a problem with that film right yeah because the you know the 11 year old kid that is magically transformed into an adult body the body has sex with the female the main female character and i'm like that is so like and then he goes back to being a kid and they have like that long lingering look at each other at the end like yeah big is like not and it's it's you know yeah, I don't think we want to look at, you know, 1980s um, sexual norms as represented on film as, as anything to emulate. If you think about things like Revenge right. of the Nerds and yeah, well, you, you get me and Porky's and stuff like that. You've actually got me thinking about Days of Our Lives in the 80s, in which oh, God. at least twice there was a scene of rape in which the woman who was raped ultimately kind of falls in love with her assailant. Um, uh, uh, Jennifer because and, uh, what's his face? Oh, Jack, Jack name. and Jennifer. Jack. And yeah. I, I remember, who's yeah. the other one? I feel like, um, Kayla and Steve, but maybe I'm wrong on that one. You know, the guy with the patch patch, what, you mean the guy that was called patch? Yeah. Um, Did they call him patch. Yeah. Did, yeah, he, did patch. he rape Kayla Vicky? Okay, Vicky says no. I don't think so. No, but there is, I mean, not in days of our lives, but in general hospital, the the classic couple Luke and Laura that were like the, they had the big Luke and Laura wedding. Their relationship started with Luke raping her as well. So it's right. it, it was so, a it's a trope in 1980s soap operas of you know yeah. the woman falling in love with her rapist. Yeah, it, it's well here the man falls in love good. with his rapist in a way, right? Like it's 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 does he? Because really... we don't really know what happened. We don't like he's well, just erased. It, that is it's like the best case scenario is that he's right. erased. Yeah. No, that that's true. It's just it's it's so problematic. But yeah, that, it's... that defense doesn't make me feel better. I kind of had a feeling that it would make me queasier, and it kind of makes me queasy. The eighties 
yeah, for a really bad decade for kind of sexual propriety. And yes, the idea that film, if you remember things like the the Revenge of the Nerds and kind of particularly how that ends, like it's just so awful. Well, in many ways, Revenge of the Nerds and the way it ends is very much what Steve and Diana do to this poor, unsuspecting engineer in this film. In a yeah, way, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because she has in Revenge of the Nerds, the cheerleader has sex with the nerd because she thinks it's her boyfriend. In a Darth Vader costume. Yep. Yes. Yeah, the in a Darth Vader yeah. costume really yeah, drives no, I, home I, the I, '80s quality of it. Yeah, I just, I, I, yeah. I'm, I understand perhaps what Patty Jenkins was going for. I have a hard time. I just have a hard yeah. time seeing well, that again, as an acceptable. Yeah, it's another place where they really needed someone else to go over this script and say, uh, "Are you hey sure guys, you really want to do idea. this? This, yeah. this seems like a really yeah. bad idea." Like. Do you want Wonder Woman to be guilty of, of non-consensual sex with a guy? Because it doesn't seem like that's really fitting with kind of the, the feminist icon we sort of set her up really to be in the first like film. really sound like a cute right. thing to do. And by the way, when you say euphemistically, how did you describe that? Euphemistically have non-consensual sex with a guy. Sex. Is, yeah. That's really euphemistic for what really happens, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to keep, you know, trying to, to for our, our younger viewers, trying to keep it, you know. Understood. So we're we're going to run against time here eventually. Should we move on to Max Lord? Well, yeah, because we don't want to be a bloated, nonsensical mess like Wonder Woman 1984. No, we want to be tight and lean and to the point. That's right. No dreamstone here. No. What do you think about Max Lord? Um, oh, I, I I thought I thought Pedro Pascal did a great job playing the role. I thought he was good too. I, I agree. I don't like the overall kind of redemption arc that he gets. Um, that you know, oh, at the end when he finds his son and hugs him and realizes he loves his son, that that kind of makes everything he did okay. Yeah. Um, because like I'm pretty sure some people got killed during the yeah. whole like when they wished for stuff. Um, yeah, absolutely. Do they get unkilled so though was, when I, people? I, so I, I found that a little bit. I, I can't remember if, if things got kind of, I mean, I mean, Wonder Woman did get her abilities back, but like right. there was so one like, woman that uh, the, the husband wished his wife was dead and like yeah. she falls down dead. I don't know if she comes back. It seems uh, like when you renounce your wish though, like things go back. So I just, but yeah. nonetheless, I, I don't want to undermine your point. It was a redemption arc that just felt so thoroughly unearned. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the thing. I was like, I, you know, I, 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 yeah, like I, I, I mean, they never really set Max Lord up as a good guy that was doing wrong. He was always kind of a sleazy guy. Um, right. Exactly. Doing wrong. So the idea that, so it's not like he went from good guy to doing bad back to good guy. So right. it, it, yeah, I think unearned is a very good way to describe it. I was like, yeah, I mean, if you had made him at all sympathetic at any point earlier in the film, Particularly regarding his son, right. um, you know, maybe because that's what I assumed when when Max made his wish and there's the whole you're going to lose what you love the most. I'm like, oh, God, his son is so dead. Like, I'm like, yeah. his son is is dead. Like, that's going to happen. Um, and then they didn't. I'm like, OK, so but yeah, so yeah, it did feel unearned in that, you know, the the movie didn't give us really any prior. um sense of their relationship being that great or Max being right. that good a guy. Yeah, so. it's because he doesn't love his son more than anything else. He loves himself more than anyone and anything yeah. else. So yeah. to me, the role was an easy role to get wrong. You could play it with too much energy or too little, but I thought he did a, a really brilliant job. Yeah, I thought I thought like, yeah, I thought Pascal uh, did a real I mean he he um, and I think most reviews of the film have actually praised his portrayal. I thought, I thought he, like you said, he tr he, he threaded that line pretty well. Um, yeah. So I, here's I just my wish question. The movie had done better with him. Yeah. Here's my question for you. How long is Donald J. Trump going to be villain number one on the silver screen? Oh God. Yeah, I'm not really looking forward to that. Or like the many, many sort of pandemic movies we're going to be getting soon. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it says something about Hollywood that we're going to get all of these Donald J. Trump is a villain movies after he's gone. 
you know, why didn't right. we get more of those while he was around? Well, um, in, their, in their defense, they didn't know he would be gone by now when they made this film. Yeah, but they, well, yeah, but they, they I mean, yeah, that's true. Well, the movie was supposed to come out much earlier. Um, right. But yeah, yeah. I, I feel like, you know, we're at the point where I don't, we don't really need films to remind us how bad Trump was because. Well, maybe we do. Lord knows. Do we? My People concern seem is that, to be... is that we're going to. Well, my concern is we're going to be so focused on Trump that we're going to forget about all the other awful people that are still around, particularly in yes. politics. Right. He'll be the way for us to kind of avoid coming to grips with broader systemic problems. Yeah. Yeah, that I that I would agree with you on. But in that way, the film did have a that I thought that was the most true to the 80s kind of vibe was the the Trump narcissism greed. Uh, me, oh, yeah. me over everything else. That that felt '80s mm-hmm. to me. I, I will give Patty Jenkins yeah. credit for that. Yeah. Well, and that's the other thing too is is um, you know that the, the the film was kind of oddly kind of grafted together between because it kind of ends with this very sc- strong emphasis on like the Cold War that wasn't really yeah. present for the first half of the film. It, yeah, it's. It's just like, it's it's a, like oh, all, all of a sudden it's nuclear Armageddon and Cold War stuff. I'm like, that kind of came out of nowhere. It's just um, a pastiche, wouldn't you say? No, but not a good one. Uh, oh, not a good one. No, I, I know you love a good pastiche. Don't I, I do I, love I, a I'm, good pastiche. This is not this is not good pastiche. This is this, this is the bad side of pastiche, which is just pastiche it, is a hot mess. So, would you call this like a poor man's pastiche? Uh, sure. Uh, yeah. A yeah. poopy pastiche. I'm trying. Yeah. Okay. So, I have one final question for you about the film. The, okay. Nobody loves the 1980s more than Patrick Hamilton. This like, is Patrick true. Hamilton is is so deeply enamored of the 1980s that I don't think anybody has half of your ardor for the 80s. I do. I do love the 80s. So did Except you for the like, parts of it that we talked talked about today? That that part Did, of the eighties, I'd like to make yes. clear, I'm not not a big fan of. <laughs> I, Just I, to make sure, you know what? I yeah. it's such the, an important the, issue the, that I. The, yeah, the rapiness of the eighties. That is not a part of the eighties that I really I really like. I like. And the it's 80s such an important issue, rapiness. Patrick. It's such an important issue. I'm not going to hold it against you. You know, like I might no, bring up you. the Riverdale thing where you said it was okay to date students and whatnot every once in a while. Did not say but, that. I will, never, you know I will never yeah, no, say this about you in the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's going to happen is the show is going to take off at some point and yeah. we're going to become media sensations and then yes. someone's going to go back and dig out that first Riverdale show and I'm going to get canceled because they're all like, oh, Hamilton <laughs> supports pedophilia. Well, now they will. So just well, know well, <laughs> that that it's all your fault that I get canceled whenever we get canceled. Uh, you you remind me that it's my fault. It. And I will it fervently I will, your fault. I will fervently apologize. So But yeah, uh, did so you, going back to your question. Did you like the 80s vibe of the like was it 80s enough for you? Like did did you feel I like know. you were in the 80s? Did it make you feel at home or were you disappointed in the 80s? I am so sick of the, of the 80s. Overall, I, I, I don't know if I was – I don't know if disappointed is the, quite the right word, but it did fall very yeah. flat for me. Uh, I agree 100 percent. Like even – even like I really – I was really hoping for more from the uh, Steve Trevor costume bit. Yeah. And that, like I just – it just felt so – it just felt so empty. It was like, yeah, we've got to do the 80s fashion jokes, so let's do the 80s fashion jokes. And, and – yep. Like there was nothing really. It, it, it felt like it was very much going through the motions. So yeah, I, I didn't. It it, just, it felt a little. Yeah, the 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 eighties ishness of the film. I kind of fell flat for me. To me, it felt like a gimmick. It was both underdone and overdone, but never done yeah. right. Yeah, I, I I think for me mostly, it felt kind of probably more towards the underdone side of things. But the fashion uh, show was a moment where they're really trying to pack everything in, you know. Hey, we got to do yeah, something with 80s just, fashion. Just, Let's do it in like 40 seconds. Yeah. Well, I think part of it too is I'm like that was – at that point, we were already like an hour into the movie. And I'm like we haven't even started the bloody plot of this thing yet. 
Yeah. Um, and so I think I, I found it kind of annoying. I'm like, can we get to like something plot-wise <laughs> in this movie? Like, can we get we, to something, just took, anything in the movie? In, this, in, in a movie that I knew going in was two and a half hours, like I just found myself getting kind of annoyed. I'm like, I cannot believe this is two and a half hours. Like I could, yeah. I've only watched half the film and I could cut an hour out of this thing. And I don't even, I'm not even a filmmaker. So even the fanny pack didn't hit for you? Well, number one, I don't associate fanny packs with the 80s. That's more of a 90s thing for me. I don't really remember oh. them being big in the 80s. I remember them being more big in the 90s. Oh, that would explain your – because you're such a big fanny pack fan that it would make I'm sense not that a you'd fanny be pack upset. Fan. No. That they've treated it no. anachronistically here. Yeah. No, that, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's part of the anachronism of the film. Yes, <laughs> that's the big problem. That's 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 my big problem with it. I mean, I that's I, could, it, I could get by with everything else that goes on in the film, but the anachronisms yes. <laughs> are where I draw the line. I'm sorry, sir, but you have gone too far. Yeah, I'm sorry. You may have had Wonder Woman effectively rape a man, but the anachronisms <laughs> are where I draw the line at this film. You will treat the fanny pack with the appropriate respect that a fanny pack <laughs> deserves. That is right. Oh. Yeah. Now. So, was, was there anything you loved about the movie? Loved? Oh, Patrick, I've just had no. a vision. Patrick, I just had a vision that you're not going to have to go into school tomorrow. Oh, did we get a text? No, I did I not get a text, but I got an email. So, Rich, what were you saying? Oh, I haven't checked. Okay. I haven't I'll checked say, is email. there anything you love about the movie? Anything, anything you love you about love, it? Or is there anything well, that I did love? Is there. Anything that you loved, or like, I guess really liked, if you don't want to call it loved, but like, I gotta say, not really. Um, there's, there's nothing in the movie yeah. that's a love. No, there's some stuff that you yeah. could like, and it was, it was entertaining as it went, but it was disappointing in the end. I thought. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, yeah, I, I, there's not like there is. I can't even really point to a moment that I'm like, wow, that was a really good moment. Um, yeah in the film like like it just it was and maybe and maybe it's because i need to watch it again now that my expectations are lowered <laughs> um but why but, why should uh, you have to lower your expectations it's not fair yeah That's, i mean like well, if I mean, you didn't like anything good the first time like yes you may accept things better that doesn't mean they're good oh, wow. we're on lunch well, Monday and tuesday Wow. Yeah. So, Rich, like what you have what? to understand Patrick's doing right now is he's starting to well, make the yeah. argument for why he should buy the Blu-ray. Yeah, no, I get it. He, he's, because he's he will that, buy like, it. He's in that fan phase now of acceptance yep. and yes. justification. Now, listen, I have yep. not bought the Blu-ray for Suicide Squad. Wow. Holy cow. Or, That's or for Harley Quinn. And Suicide Squad has got to be on sale by now. Like it's oh, yeah, be it's, it's oh, or yeah. I don't I don't have I don't have Shazam. I don't have Shazam. I well, think, you know, I didn't uh, think Shazam was so bad. I would say Shazam was better than this. But you oh, yeah, Shazam was definitely better, but it's also it's just not one that I feel compelled to get. Like it was fine, yeah. but I don't feel compelled to get it. It's the end of the uh, world for superheroes. No, yeah, no, no. Did I hear got, we've got we've got one division saving things. One division. I cannot wait to talk oh, about one division. We need wait. to talk about one division. I agree. I agree. And maybe we should start doing this more frequently so we can get back in the routine, you know, and, and, and build. Yes. Yes. If only things like a global pandemic and, and you know. Mini snowstorms. Snowstorms. Right, you know and, you know, the, the potential overthrow of our democracy would stop getting in the way. Yeah. But we've we've persevered. We have perseverated. We have. And now yes. we are back, baby. And look at this. This is a nice tight back. ending right here, too, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. At fifty-eight minutes, it's almost per. It's like we haven't lost a beat. No, no. So, but that that dead air Should is not a great way to end no. the. Oh, okay. No, that's not a, that's not a great way. So yeah, so yeah. I'm not even sure what the next. I'm not even sure what the next DC movie coming out is. Now that I think about it, I don't know. Like there's the Batman movie floating around. Oh, I, uh, I guess there's um, the next Suicide Squad film. I guess that James Gunn is working on. Maybe that's. Are the we next still one. talking, or is this just like, is this part of the podcast? No, we're still talking. We're just finding a nice, a nice landing spot. I thought we had a flash too. <laughs> yeah, but I think the director or someone of that just quit. <laughs> and the guy that did yeah. the flash, I think.
think got in trouble for for hitting someone or something. Oh man! Which, you know what? Rich, do you know what would be a yeah. really really good ending? Would be for you what? to just like convince him to marry your sister. <laughs> <laughs> 